Hello, welcome to the Introduction to Proofs course video on number systems. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. In this video, by the end of it, you should be able to describe the natural numbers, integers, rationals, and real numbers, and you should be able to identify if a number is a natural number, an integer, or a rational number. The place we start off with is the natural numbers. So the natural numbers are all the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. And we denote the collection of all of them using this fancy script n. So another way of describing these are the counting numbers or the whole counting numbers. These are our basic building blocks. So some examples of natural numbers are 1 or 7 or some huge power of 10, a million, 2020, these are all natural numbers. So what makes something not a natural number? The things that aren't natural numbers are negatives. Zero doesn't count because we start at one. Five over two isn't. This is like one, uh, 2.5. And the square root of two is also not a natural number. It's somewhere between one and two. So we'll use the natural numbers as the basis for uh, everything we do in this course. Um, one observation that's worth stressing again is that zero is not a natural number in this course. Uh, some courses may use it as a natural number, but for us, whenever we say natural number, we don't mean zero. Um, there's also a sort of slight debate or convention about this in computer science. So, uh, some computer languages want zero to be a natural number and some don't. One observation about the natural numbers is that you can perform addition and multiplication in the natural numbers. That's another way of saying you can add natural numbers and still get a natural, you can multiply naturals and still get a natural. But you're not, you can't do subtraction or division. Sometimes you can do it, like five minus three is two, but typically you can't always subtract natural numbers. So if all you're concerned with are addition and multiplication, say all you're concerned with is measuring the areas of fields or things like this, then uh, the natural numbers are perfectly good for you. And this partly explains why the natural numbers were um, sort of some of the first mathematical objects that we used. Now, if we're trying to fix the issue of being able to do subtraction, we introduce the integers. So the integers are all positive and negative natural numbers and zero. So they go off to the left, minus one, minus two, minus three, etc. They include zero, and they also include all the natural numbers. And we use uh, Z to denote the collection of all integers. Um, as a bit of trivia, the letter Z comes from the German word Zollen, meaning numbers. So in case you were wondering. Some examples of this. 1, 0, some large negative power of 10, sorry, some large power of 10 that is negative, and 20, 20. Some non-examples, 5 over 2 isn't an integer, root 2, and minus 1.1. Those are not integers. So one observation about the integers is that now, in addition to addition and subtraction, uh, sorry, in addition to addition and multiplication, you can now perform subtraction in the integers. So if those are the only three operations you're concerned with, you can work perfectly happy in the world of integers. Division isn't always possible, it's sometimes possible, but typically you don't expect that the division of two integers will give you back an integer. So how can we fix that? How can we um, make it so that we are able to do division in addition to these three operations? Well, then we introduce the rational numbers. So the rational numbers are the numbers that can be represented as a fraction A over B, and we'll insist that the numerator, so the top part, is an integer, and the bottom part, the denominator, is a natural number. So integer on top, natural number on bottom. And we'll denote the collection of all of these using Q. Q here stands for quotient. 
So what are some examples? 2 is a rational number because you can express it as 2 over 1. Minus 3.5 is a rational number because it can be expressed as an integer, say minus 7, over a natural number, 2. And 0 is also a rational number because it is 0, which is an integer, over 5, which is a natural. There are many other ways of representing all of these numbers. I've just chosen one. And that's all you need from rational numbers. It says it can be represented. It doesn't mean that it's the only way of representing it. Some non-examples, square root of 7, pi, and log base 2 of 3 are all, rational, are all not rational numbers. Don't worry for now if you don't remember what logarithms do. You can look them up if you want. Um, we'll see this a little bit later on in the course. Pi and root 7 are things that uh, you've seen before. So going back to what sort of operations we can perform, now, if we only use rational numbers, we can perform addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So we basically have everything we want. The only thing we can't do is square roots, and I guess logarithms as well. But these are the four basic operations, and you can do a lot of work uh, with them. And in fact, for a long time, this is uh, the ancient Greek mathematicians thought that all numbers were rational and that you could perform all of these operations with them. It was quite a surprise to them to learn that there were not, uh, there are numbers that are not rational. But we'll get there in a moment. All of these numbers are called real numbers. So the real numbers are all numbers that can be represented using a decimal expansion. And we denote this collection using the scripty R. And while we're here, we may as well say what it means for a number to be irrational. A real number is irrational if it's not rational. Uh, this doesn't have a fancy symbol like script i or something, but if you really want to denote it somehow, you can denote it using scripty r uh, take away q. We'll get to this notation a little bit more in uh, later courses. But if you really want to represent it, you can represent it like this. So some examples of real numbers, 1, 0, pi, log base 2 of 3, this decimal expansion, whatever it is, um, this is not something that uh, I'm, I just made it up, it's just a decimal expansion, but because it has a decimal expansion, it's a real number. Now one of the big difficulties is how do we decide whether a number is rational or irrational? And we don't have a lot of tools right now for this. Um, we, it's quite challenging to show that a number is irrational. Because to show that something is irrational, you need to show that it can't be represented in some way. And that's typically quite hard. We'll look at proof techniques for this later on in the course. For now, let's focus on when is a number rational. So here are some exercises for you. So show that all of these are rational numbers by expressing them as an integer over a natural number. So 2.333 repeating, 10 over root 11, root 3 over root 12, and this complicated fraction, uh, which is an example from the textbook. Finally, let's take a moment to reflect uh, on the material we saw today. So what can you do with integers that you can't do with natural numbers? Put another way, why did we introduce integers? What can you do with real numbers that you can't do with rational numbers? Put another way, why did we introduce real numbers? Finally, what are some irrational numbers that you know? Do you know why they are irrational? Thank you for watching.